This is an episode that is really, really good on paper. Let's get to it, shall we? You should see me in a tank top. Are you copy? The Outer Limits. We begin with a bang and a fake baby that have absolutely nothing to do with the story. Before we go to humanity's first extrasolar colony at the beautifully named NX-1, a planet that is constantly bathed in powerful sunlight and just so happens to look exactly like Earth. The Space Agency has been getting weird reports from the colony and sent a psychiatrist to investigate. Because nothing ensures the success of a mission like sending a head shrink when things go wrong. Evan Marshall arrives, sees a woman he knows, Julie, and then learns that there has been a sudden death and that the communication system is broken, while everyone around him acts incredibly strange. They all go inside, where Lieutenant Chandler tells Evan about how much he wants to dream, I miss dreaming, before sending him to tour the station. He then hides a note in the doctor's suit. As Chandler attempts to leave, he is blocked by the begoggled Reese Fowler, who can clearly read his mind. Don't think it. Block it out. Don't think what, Lieutenant? The pair go back into Evan's quarters, where Reese reveals he's actually Judge Doom. Reese then makes Chandler destroy the note by reciting Weird Al lyrics. Eat it. Eat it. Just eat it. In his defense, paper is high in fiber. Unsatisfied that Chandler won't try it again, Reese vaporizes the lieutenant. Meanwhile, we get caught up in some incredibly boring melodrama about Julie, her now-dead husband Griff, and her former lover, Evan, but there's no need to go into that because it has no bearing on the plot. Later, Julie freaks out when Evan nearly gets caught in a brief flash of glitter rain. She then explains that she doesn't want him to probe her. Then, she bizarrely brings up George Orwell. In a funny way, you're a kind of... kind of 1984 man. Before sending Evan on his way while she and Dr. Reiner go to a nearby cave, where they find the Professor. Sparks fly between the Professor and a giant alien ant when Evan arrives to learn the truth. Reese, it appears, was glitter-bombed and turned into a horrible mutant, and the crew, in a fit of total compassion, decided to try and leave him behind while they all returned to Earth. For some reason, Reese didn't like this plan and killed the commander, Griff, disabled the spacecraft, and started holding the entire mission hostage in hopes of finding a cure. Now that he knows this, Evan realizes he is as trapped as the rest of them, but he comes up with a plan to have Dr. Reiner hypnotize him to forget the entire flashback and lock the memories behind a single word in this case, Reese, which everybody assumes won't be said until Evan is back on Earth. This plan goes about as well as you'd expect when Reese immediately reads Dr. Reiner's mind and learns about it, during which Dr. Reiner trips and dies for plot convenience. Reese then chases Evan and Julie back to the cave after shouting his name at them, and after shouting at them for a while, he runs in. Then we find out he's so afraid of the dark that he dies, I think? Now that I'm three quarters of the way through the first season, I'm starting to get the distinct impression that the show's greatest strength is also its biggest weakness. That is, its ambition. This episode has a great story that if it were a decently written novel, I would absolutely love. Unfortunately, the show has a very hard time living up to it. The acting is lackluster, even from Warren Oates, who plays Reese. The romantic subplot is painfully forced. The conclusion doesn't make a lot of sense, and the atmosphere, which should be one of mystery and menace, actually comes across like an amateur production where the cast and crew stand around trying to figure out what they're supposed to be doing half the time. The potential of the story is let down by the execution, but if you want to see this premise done better, all you have to do is watch the second pilot episode of the original Star Trek, where no man has gone before. And that's all I have on The Mutant. Now, as always, do all those YouTube-y things, check out my Patreon, and all that other good YouTube-y stuff. 
But until next time, this is the Unapologetic Geek telling you to never be ashamed of what you love, as long as you're not hurting anybody. Save it!